Alright. So guys, we are going to get started. You need to be able to see the screen. So if your eyes are closed or you are sitting somewhere where you can't see it, you need to move where you can see it and have your eyes open and head up so you're not sleeping. Um, are you recording? Okay. The reason I'm recording this lesson is because we have a lot of students who are quarantined. We also have a couple Art 2 students who had to go into a different classroom. So this will make it to where they can still get the same lessons you guys are getting. So yesterday you guys turned in your self-portraits. If you did not, they were due yesterday. If you had some absences, obviously you get some days to turn it in. You get one day for each day you were absent. All right, so they still need to be turned in to me. And you probably won't have class time to work on them. You're gonna to need to take them home and get them finished. So we talked a lot when you guys were doing your self-portraits about drawing what you see, okay? And we, um, when we're doing our lines, a lot of times, I told you guys for an example, when you are drawing your eyes, you're not actually looking at the lines of the eyes. You're telling yourself, okay, I'm drawing an eye, I know what an eye looks like, and you're just drawing what you know an eye looks like. Okay, it's really important that we're looking at the actual lines and recreating them. So we are going to do an exercise where we are going to draw upside down. So I gave all of you a paper that looks like this. Um, your stuff is back there, if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> um, so I gave you a picture that looks like this. This is Roy Lichtenstein. Do you know? I don't know. I think it's Lichtenstein, Lichtenstein, Lichtenstein. I don't know exactly how you pronounce it. Um, if you saw his actual work, you would probably recognize it. He does a lot of these contour line drawings. And then when he colors it, instead of coloring it in, he does big dots of color. And it's almost kind of pixelated color. Um, so this is just one of his line drawings. So this is going to be your guys' first practice. But you are not drawing it like this. When you draw it, you are going to be flipping it upside down to draw it. So what this actually does is it kind of tricks your brain and makes you use the opposite side of your brain. Instead of drawing what you think you see, you have to draw what is actually there. So one thing that I like to do when I am drawing to help me draw what I see, especially if I'm drawing from a picture, it's pretty easy. I don't necessarily do an entire grid, which you could do. I know you guys have done grid drawing, but I do like to at least kind of think about splitting my picture kind of in half because that gives me more points where I can check to see if I'm getting the lines in the right place, okay? So then I would, and you guys are going to have to kind of look at your copy of the picture while I'm drawing because I can't really project both that well, okay? So if I get my paper, I'm going to do the same thing. And this is pretty easy, too, because it's actually the same size. A lot of time, the challenge comes in the proportion. So that's something we don't have to focus on too much yet. It's already in proportion, pretty much the same size. Okay? So you're going to decide. Um, some of you, I think, try to maybe, ladies, are you watching? Because you're not even looking at the screen. I need you looking at the screen, please. Turn around. Like 
with your chair. Thank you. Um, so a lot of times some of you will try to start at the top and draw from the top down or from the bottom up. When you are trying to draw what you see and get it in proportion, it is actually helpful to give yourself some landmarks all the way around the paper. So for instance, if I look at this, I can see I have one line that starts about here. Right? I have a line that comes down about here into this middle line that I made right here. Okay? And I can already see I got that jump off just a little <laughs> bit. Right, I can see this line. I can start. So I'm not even finishing the lines necessarily, but what I'm doing is if I go around the paper, leaving almost kind of these little clues for myself, then when I go back in, and let me darken these so you can see them better on the video. Then when I go back in, I can see where things are connected and where everything should be. So another place that, since I split it in the middle, another place I could start <coughs> is I see this line that kind of comes down like this. So I'm going to go around and give myself a lot of these clues before I start um, filling in the rest of the lines. Does that make any sense? And I'm going to do it, you know, on the bottom as well. You can see this line starts about here and goes about to that line. It's got that curve to it. So I'm trying to recreate the lines as far as how curved they are, how straight they are, and where they're hitting on the paper, how they're connected to each other. And once you get the hang of doing this, you can actually do it when you're looking at um, items too. If you have in your mind kind of what the frame is or you have a viewfinder, you can do the same thing. So today, you guys are going to practice um, on this one. I'm going to walk around and help you. Once you get your practice done, I have um, a few that you can choose from that you're actually going to then do for a grade that are a little more difficult. Okay? Question. Um, actually, I'm going to take questions after Darian stops recording. Thank you.